I've been noticing in social media about this 100 days of code challenge. And I wonder like, why is it something that people is posting it constantly over and over? And it seems like it's a never ending thing. Then I decided to do some research about it. And then I figured out that this was a legit thing. I've been coding for about five years and a little bit more than that. And I really didn't get a chance to work on something like that or do a, such a challenge. Uh, but I think that internally it kind of like did something similar without really noticing. In reality, I was just so passionate about learning programming, passionate about learning something new every day. I remember that every single progress that I made was a huge step towards reaching my goals. And that's probably exactly what you're experiencing if you are doing this challenge. And if you're thinking about doing this challenge, or that's something that you're probably will experience. I started taking a look at the, the challenge in itself, what the rules were, and you know, what, you know, taking some, some, some basic idea of what exactly people can take the most out of it. And some things are interesting and I validate some things. I, I think that I, they could be improved a little bit better for you to take the most benefit out of this challenge. I went ahead and took a look at, at the, the rules. For example, rule number one is the fact that you have to code for at least one hour. 100 days in a sequence period at least one one hour another rule is to keep yourself accountable and making sure that you share your progress uh, publicly another one is to keep uh, to connect with the community where social media twitter instagram you name it linkedin whichever you want uh, you just share that progress with the community and in fact that's that's gonna be the last that's rule which is gonna be to keep a log of your progress and about your feelings, express it with everybody and see if you can gain some feedback from other people and see people are seeing the same struggles or you can probably get some advice on this. I'm sorry to disappoint you if I tell you that I have not done that 100 days of code challenge yet. The reality is that I'm at the point of the, my career that I don't think that I'll need that. If you're a new programmer, yes, probably I, I could see the benefit, but at the same time, I don't really see the fact that you have to do this to improve your skill set. I think that one of the most important things about learning is to do same thing for longer periods of time. So yes, one hour might be good enough for brand new developers. That's perfect. But if you want to take it to the next level, well, why don't you just focus to try to make it to two to three hours? If you're thinking about becoming a professional programmer, that's a reality that you're going to face. You're going to face with actually working at least eight hours a day unless you hit. And probably you're going to face that if you, if you don't know, you have a lot of experience, you start working in different companies. You'll find out quickly that you will probably work more than eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours, 11, even 12, more than that. And you can ask people who have been there in the community and you share that with Twitter, with LinkedIn, you will ask people and they will tell you, uh, hey, <laughs> eight hours is just uh, an icing of the cake, basically. And if you get it, that's like, like the dream uh, for somebody who is working as a programmer. I highly encourage you, instead of doing just one hour, uh, try to raise a bar. And I understand that the minimum is one hour and one hour in itself might be plenty, but once again, in real life, uh, what it takes, I mean, you're, you're going to have longer amount of times where you're going to be developing. Sometimes you will have 80% developing, 20% uh, meetings, 70% developing, programming, 30% uh, meetings. You get the idea. But try for longer periods of time. That's my first advice when it comes to this. Among the positive things I notice with this challenge is uh, the ability for you to network with people. And let me tell you, this could be one of the important aspects about this, especially if you're a solo or a person who just self-taught as a programmer, who is starting this journey, who, does, who doesn't know anybody. Yes, that's actually something that might be hard to, to face because in reality, not everybody likes to code. Not everybody likes to program. People will think that that's something for nerds. And in reality, that's, that's totally not true. Everybody can become a programmer without being a nerd uh, in computer science or, or, or in computers or, you know, been on computers all the time. So it gives you ability to network with people in social media, uh, know people who are in the industry, how they communicate, how they, they talk. Some of them could be rude. Some of them could be nice. You will see more of them, uh, there, are, there are more of them that are nice, uh, people who are willing to help, 
because at some point they were in your shoes they faced some of those same struggles in the learning process and as well uh, they needed somebody some somebody else who could teach them or could show them pretty much a mentor somebody who could help them in that learning process another positive things about 100 days of code of challenge is that you will share your knowledge and this is something that is even though it sounds dumb enough just to post whatever you did it will allow you to show you know show just put yourself out there with your code out there and although sometimes this might seem a little bit intimidating it will give you an idea where you're really learning the things that you should learn or the things that doesn't really matter or doesn't make a lot of impact in your learning process why because for example if you're learning about you know you want to become a web developer but then you're learning about swift and you start sharing that all of that knowledge and then you start sharing as well that you're learning because you want to become a web developer i can guarantee you that somebody almost instantly would tell you or share uh, with you that you should start focusing more your concepts fundamentals uh, towards technologies that are focused towards your, your what you're thinking to become a web developer if that's the case right also it will give you the confidence to be able to, to talk about it in the technical language and this is important because at the beginning my fee it might be a little bit overwhelming to try to talk about you know if you're talking about angular using services controllers communication between components you know all of these concepts that at the beginning you might not understand right but as you use them more often it will become more natural for you it will become easier for you to communicate and you will you won't feel like you're not sure how to explain somebody uh, if you have for example issues struggles with something in particular what is it exactly that you're facing what are the issues that you're facing another thing that i like but at the same time i'm kind of like in between with this and is to keep yourself accountable yes i understand that everybody is determined to keep themselves accountable when it comes to reaching out goals but one of the things that i've heard and i personally haven't applied at least in my journey of learning you know becoming a programmer uh, is to do something that will keep myself accountable I think that one of the things that in this case should be critical is that you're passionate about learning yes it sounds weird but that's pretty much the journey of a programmer you need to be in a constant learning process because what you learn today might not be the same thing that you need to do to use for your work or for your projects in three or four years so you're gonna be in that constant learning process i could personally say every time that i try to learn new technologies uh, something new if it's for example something like graphql react.js python Node.js, Express, Loopback, whatever technologies I would like to use, cloud services, AWS, whatever. The cool thing about this journey is that I'm getting to learn all of these new technologies that will allow me to include, put into my skill set, but also to understand which out of all of them I could use and then define a pipeline or a project and an idea and see which which one of those I should use instead of just picking one because I don't, don't know many of them or just picking just because is to have the criteria to be able to choose what best works for specific projects. However, there are some tips for you that you could use if you are somebody who struggles a lot with with keeping up with yourself like you setting yourself accountable and is to either and set up some some kind of like reward or some out some kind of punishment yes it kind of sounds weird but it's actually kind of kind of be beneficial for you so for example if uh, i am a person who likes to to ex exercise a lot and i pretty much it's pretty much something that i love so one of the things that i could say is that if i don't get to meet my challenge today then i won't work out today it's a punishment and because it's something that you love to do you you just i mean it's something that you, you pretty much have to do every day or you like watching netflix for example that will force you to get out of your comfort zone and you start typing some some code trying to learn something new trying to meet the challenge on time so you could prevent from not doing something or another thing is to not instead of having a punishment to have a reward for example i like a lot to eat sweets like i, I like to eat candy man i just it's pretty much a day without candy is probably something that i would be struggling a lot and i could just add it into my challenge so for example if i don't get to meet my one hour uh, minimum of, of code then i won't be able to to eat 
sweet and as dumb as, as dumb as it sounds for me it's meaningful but for you you can have something as well that is meaningful enough for you one of the other things that i like about this challenge is that i could see how people will have struggles how people will have those ups and those downs and that's very normal about programmer and you have to deal with that that's a reality i mean some days are gonna be good some days are gonna be you're you're, you're gonna feel like grabbing something and just smash it straight to your computer to your monitor screen and just break it all just destroy everything that you have because simply you are not being able to figure things out or you're just stuck on the same problem uh, for about four five six whatever amount of hours that you have spent on a specific solution and it can become frustrating i can tell you because i've i've been in that situation it will teach you right away uh, that you need to enjoy the ups and downs that it's something that is gonna be normal. And you're gonna teach yourself what to do when you're facing a lot of frustration and you're gonna enjoy it definitely a lot whenever you're getting things done and pretty much that mental flow, that learning process, whatever you're trying to solve, your coding, it's just going very smooth. Now, one thing that I don't like about this is that, yes, you can have 100 days of code, but man, that, this could in theory could lead into a little bit of burnout because right now you might be just learning right you are not you are not working but if you start working for example every single day sooner or later you're just gonna burn out you're, you're not just gonna enjoy the process you're just gonna feel a programmer is not thing for you that programmer is being a programmer is something that is very challenging and reality i would like to prevent people from having that situation because it's not really a comfortable position it, it's it makes you think where you want to keep working in this career or you want to keep becoming a programmer or or you we just want to keep working uh, as a programmer that's the reality so i'm not sure about that the 100 days of code uh, that might be something that could lead to burnout once again but also for those who are struggling with commitment that might be a good thing i am kind of like in between uh, in that aspect however i could share with you some of the things that you could take the most out of this challenge especially if you're a brand new developer or if you are just somebody who are looking to, to improve your programming skill sets. One of the things that you should do is to set up goals. What is it exactly that you want to accomplish by the time you complete your challenge? Is it something that you are you just doing it for the sake of doing it? Are you just doing it because your friends are saying it and you feel like you have the need to do it? No, are you gonna do something and spend all that amount of time for no reason it makes no sense right one of the things to this as i said to set up goals and one of those goals is to start a project to create a project to develop your own website or to develop your own application to develop something it could be either small or it could be big it could be whatever you want and in fact you can have several smaller projects or a, a one just big project but the most important thing for you is to set up a goal for example you could also uh, set up your goal of understanding uh, having a clear understanding of the fundamentals of javascript or the fundamentals of python and how does it work or for example you could also set another goal of being able to understand completely how react.js works or angular.js works and, and being able to develop an application using that so the most important thing about this is to set up concrete goals make sure that you're not just learning everything or anything at the same time just try to keep it focused because there's so much to learn uh, in this world of programming that it, it will be impossible for you to, to to know it all just making sure that you keep it focused and you know where you're going with your learning process another thing is to plan out your final outcome yes i kind of like mentioned already with the previous step is to have to to set up some goals and to plan out a final outcome, yes, if you want to learn React, what exactly you want to develop, what kind of application you want to develop, that will be that will be your outcome, and that will help you to you know gain some probably some skill sets that you never thought that you you didn't have to learn at the moment of developing a specific kind of application. Finally, but not least, I would recommend you to ask yourself: Why are you coding? Are you coding for the sake of fun? Are you coding because are you looking for a career switch? Are you coding because you want to improve your skill set? Ask yourself that question first before starting this challenge. 
Yes, because that will help you to understand whether this challenge is good for you or not. Whether the goals that you have set for your challenge align to, to the things that you're looking to, to do, looking to improve, looking to become in the future as a program. Take that into account. Make sure to do those things before starting your challenge. At the end, when it comes to software development, I mean, we just don't right away start coding. We plan ahead of time. What are the things that we need to do? We have a strategy in place and then we execute, which is the coding power. So think about that before starting your challenge. Finally, but not least, if you're an experienced developer, I highly recommend you to start commenting out there uh, for those people who are posting the hashtag 100 days of challenge. Uh, or 100 days of code challenge whatever and i highly recommend you to start sharing with people uh, the positive vibes and also share knowledge how things uh, could be potentially improved so you could give them alternative ways to especially new ways new programmers uh, in out there different alternatives to essentially do things and, and probably better things to, to do things Overall, keep it up, my friends, with that code challenge. If you are, um, you feel discouraged, by no means, I'm trying to discourage you. But at the same time, I would like you to have impression that you should have a focused plan of learning when it comes to programming. If you are an experienced developer, what do you think about this 100 days of code challenge? If you are a brand new developer or you are just learning new skill sets using that 100 days of code challenge. Tell me what have been your experiences with this, uh, what have been the things that you could have done better to make this process more enjoyable. Or for example, if you fail in that process, what were the reasons why you failed? Share them with me. Uh, well, they, there they are. Those were my tips and my thoughts about uh, the challenge. And just and the last thing that I wanted to share with you is to trust the process. That's it. Just trust the process, uh, thinking that some days are going to be good, some days are going to be bad. And sooner or later, if you stick with your final goals, you're probably going to be able to achieve whatever you want to achieve. It sounds a little bit cheesy, but it, it actually it actually happened. That's all for today, my friends. And I would say in Spanish, ciao, ciao. But since I know that you're not watching this video for a Spanish lesson, then I'll see you until the next time.